subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Animals hunt and look for food using multiple senses and this is the case with mosquitoes too, the female ones that suck blood especially from humans. Mosquitoes can smell carbon dioxide and body odour and they're also attracted to colours that are high contrast as many of us, especially in India, might already be familiar with the fact that mosquitoes are attracted to darker clothing. When mosquitoes are closer to a target that they hope to bite, the heat from the skin and of course the smells, the odours from the skin guide the mosquito first in deciding if this is the appropriate host to suck blood from and if yes, to the right spot on the host's body. Needless to say, these are all female mosquitoes as male mosquitoes do not suck blood. Now, scientists have used CRISPR-Cas9 to mutate genes which are responsible for hunting using vision, showing that they can impair this kind of hunting, essentially potentially making humans and other targets invisible to the mosquito's eyes alone. In this video, let's look at how the researchers conducted this experiment, what their findings were and how these could help in curbing mosquito-borne diseases that have plagued humanity for centuries. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. We've discussed mosquitoes and mosquito-borne diseases multiple times before and the genetic advances being made with respect to transgenic mosquitoes. Mosquitoes have played such an important role in human history by afflicting us with countless diseases that we either haven't been able to cure or prevent. The reason they're so effective at doing this is because the female mosquitoes that bite us come in contact directly with our blood. And they are also very good at transmitting disease from one human to another because they fly and they do this very rapidly. Some common but deadly mosquito-borne diseases are malaria, chikungunya, zika fever, dengue, yellow fever and various types of encephalitis. Mosquitoes are classified into over 100 genera or genus and there are more than 3500 named species. Some of these species and genera are of particular interest to us, such as the Anopheles genera mosquitoes, which transmit malaria, the Culex mosquitoes, which can transmit Japanese encephalitis and the West Nile virus, and the Aedes mosquitoes, which spread dengue, chikungunya, and yellow fever. This research, this study was performed on female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, also known as yellow fever mosquitoes. We've all seen this particular species of mosquito, especially if you're in India. It's the one with white striped markings on its legs. It's very easy to identify. And these mosquitoes are especially attracted to people wearing darker clothes like navy blue shirts or black jeans. It is also the mosquito that bites us during dawn and dusk when there's still some sunlight. The Anopheles mosquito, which spreads malaria, bites only at night, but the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which spreads chikungunya and yellow fever, does so during dawn and dusk. In previous experiments and in real life, we've seen that the Aedes aegypti mosquito prefer darker clothes and even when there are no humans, the mosquitoes pick darker areas than lighter ones in controlled experiments. Their eyesight is not very good or efficient, so something that is just high contrast in terms of color is enough to attract them. Any blobs of darker colored material after a detection of carbon dioxide sends them hunting. They then zero in on the color and once they are within a few centimeters of the target, say the skin, their nose kicks into bigger action and they are looking for carbon dioxide cues from the body. They use carbon dioxide plumes in the air around us to actually gauge wind direction and wind speed by flying with it. The findings of this experiment are published in the journal Current Biology and they are linked below. And in this experiment, the researchers played around with two genes that were responsible for light sensing and managed to make the darkly colored targets invisible to the mosquito's eyes when they were hunting for blood. In the experiment, the researchers had a setup with a black colored circle and a white colored one 
placed inside an insect cage that measured about 30 centimeters by 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter. They put in about 50 female mosquitoes who had not yet fed on blood and then checked and mapped their trajectories for about half an hour to understand how they function inside. Then they introduced a little bit of carbon dioxide. When these female mosquitoes are looking for blood to suck, carbon dioxide is the one that acts as trigger. Our exhalation is what guides the mosquitoes to us. When they sense carbon dioxide in the air around them, then their senses are triggered and they start to look for visual cues. In this experimental setup, as soon as the researchers introduced carbon dioxide, the mosquitoes flew to the black spot. When they dimmed the light, the preference for the dark spot started to weaken, showing that their eyesight was in fact not all that great. And without carbon dioxide also, the mosquitoes did not show a preference for either of the two colored circles. So the visual cue based hunting was getting triggered by carbon dioxide. The researchers explored the role of two visual pigment proteins called rhodopsins. These are called OP1 and OP2. These proteins are actually very similar to each other and they work together. So the team decided to deactivate one and see what happens to the eyesight of the mosquitoes and then deactivate the other and see how the mosquitoes behave and then deactivate both and see what the differences in the results are. To do all of this, the researchers first started injecting mutations into mosquito eggs, thousands of them, using a needle with a very, very sharp, tiny tip. The eggs then hatched and the larvae grew into adults and these adults were then used in the experiment. The adults are actually transported in a pipette-like mechanism where a mouth-controlled aspirator is used to suck the mosquitoes in. The scientist has to hold on to their breath and then go over and release the mosquitoes by exhaling into the insect cage. When only OP1 was deactivated, the mosquitoes behaved similar to control mosquitoes where nothing was deactivated and they flew directly to the dark spot when carbon dioxide was introduced. When only OP2 was deactivated, the exact same thing happened. But the researchers noted that when both rhodopsins were deactivated, both OP1 and OP2, this double mutant mosquitoes stopped exhibiting a preference for the dark circles and just flew around in all directions. There were no visual clues that were being used to zero in on a target. Instead, the mosquitoes started to show a preference for a zone in the setup such as the top part of the cage or someplace close to the inlet from where carbon dioxide was coming in. These double mutants also used the carbon dioxide plumes to understand wind speed and direction much like they do in the wild. The researchers did perform other tests to ensure that the mosquitoes had not turned completely blind. They just stopped using contrasting colors as cues for hunting. The researchers wanted to establish this. So they performed some tests to confirm this. And this included things like direct electrodes to the double mutant's eyes to measure electric responses to light stimuli. And also the team used rotating structures with black and white stripes to make mosquitoes walk in the direction of the stripes, something that they're known to do and they did so. So the researchers confirmed that the mosquitoes were not blinded. They just stopped using visual cues to hunt. So they are genetically edited to remove their ability to hunt using visual cues, thus making it harder for them to bite us and spread diseases. These findings can offer a great deal of help to mosquito control measures. If mosquitoes can't discern hosts clearly, they are impaired in their ability to hunt, offering an advantage to us. They have honed their mechanism to their advantage over millennia and now there is a dent in it. There's been a long history of advancements made in attempting to treat mosquito bone diseases, prevent mosquito bone diseases, and now attempting to control the mosquitoes themselves, especially with newer genetic technologies. We are attempting to play God at this level because our species is fighting for survival and health and fighting off threats. 
Any minor but sustainable technological advantage against mosquito borne diseases can have a tremendous impact in shaping the course of human history, especially in the future going forward during times of global heating, which is aiding the rapid spread of mosquitoes to newer and newer parts of the warming globe.